Good morning. All of you here and all of you out there in the North X. And all of you joining online. Because there are more people who want to do announcements, I'll try to keep it short. I'll try. So there is a lot going on. If you turn your bulletin to the last inside cover pages, 14 and 15, you will see a lot is going on here at Grace. And you can be very, very busy this week, the next week, the week after. You get it. So aside from this Sunday, where we have five events, I think, in total, I want to point out that next Saturday there is a hike coming up. At 2 p.m., the Grace Outdoors group meets at the Windy Hill parking lot, and you can be part of that fun. Signing up is possible through using the Grace Connect button on the back page of your bulletin. That will lead you to a, a page that is not our um, usual web page. But there's also other things that you can sign up for. For example, the men's event or our All Saints project. Just check it out. Holy Land trip, maybe. Who knows? Below the Grace Outdoors, you see an orange Halloween-y colored ad. And that is to invite you to our Trunk or Treat event on October 20th. You can either come and provide a trunk, which is fun, get creative. There are prizes to win, I've heard. Or you can just dress up, show up, and enjoy, be part of the crowd. <laughs> then you've already noticed coming in, I'm sure that there are a lot of standing tables out there in the Narthex with a lot of signs on them. This is our volunteer engagement fair. And to keep you here after the service, we've also provided some special treats. So I invite you to get your treats after the service and then go around and check all the sign-ups because we are looking for your gifts and maybe you are looking for things to do and engage in. And um, we could be a match. So check them out and see whatever is needed here at Grace. Um, and we're looking forward to your sign-up. And the last thing I want to mention are our prayers today. You see we have a flower on the altar. The flower is for the grandchild of Eric Brudas, born about 10 days ago, Dave and Patrick. And um, Dave and Patrick was born to Taylor, Eric's son, and Arlene Brudas. And so Ellen and Sally are now also great-grandparents. So we have the whole dynasty of Bruduses here. I ask you to keep in your prayers Jim Miller, the father of Holly Lucky, and Tom Dunlap, the father of Chris Dunlap, and also Marilyn Aiden at the death of her sister-in-law. That was, again, more than enough from me, and I hand over to Lee and then to Bruce. Uh, good morning. Just a quick note, I don't know we've got a uh, blizzard of announcements, but uh, three weeks from this afternoon will be our annual uh, fundraiser against food insecurity, commonly called the Crop Walk. It will be uh, based out of Menlo Park, launching at one o'clock from St. Raymond's Church. And um, <clears throat> last year, Grace had our best showing yet of the six years that we've participated. Um, we came in statistically fourth in terms of contributions and walkers, uh, largely to the credit of the, both the youth program and the mentor program. And uh, um, let's see, uh, while food insecurity may seem like a topic or issue that is distant from our congregation, uh, demographic uh, information actually uh, makes it quite clear that it is a need in our congregation. And so I'd ask you to please consider participating either as a walker or pledging to support a walker. And I will be at one of the tables in the back after the service. Thank you. Good morning. I think you all should have received a letter from the Seminary Scholarship Committee 
Uh, we're here to celebrate Elizabeth's uh, progress with her studies at Luther Seminary. She's uh, starting her second year, final year of study to receive a master's in youth, ch children, youth, and family ministry with the goal of uh, being ordained in word and surface service as a deacon. So, uh, and we updated in Grace Notes recently about that program. Grace, the council has set the goal to support her in her studies so that she doesn't have any debt as she ex uh, completes her work there. So, uh, although it has been a long established fund of the church, it isn't part of the annual budget. So we, re we rely on contributions from members. So appreciate if you would prayerfully consider a donation. Uh, QR codes, my grace, or a check would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Please stand as you're able. Blessed be the God, the one who forms us. Jesus, who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet you fail to follow. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we face on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, the us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond our all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right. And by your merciful guidance, help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. You may be seated. A reading from Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and lightning, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we will listen, but do not let God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. Their sound has 
gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The star. Wenn irgendjemand ausmeint, sich auf irgendeinen Vorzug verlassen zu können, dann könnte ich es umso mehr. Ich bin nämlich am achten Tag bestimmt, Stimme aus dem Volk Israel, aus dem Stamm Benjamin, ein Hebräer aus hebräischer Familie, versehe ich in meiner Tora-Fassung. Ich verfolgte in meinem Glauben Seifer, die Gemeinde war untätig in der Gerechtigkeit, die allein aus der Tor zu gewinnen ist. Alles aber, was mir früher Gewinn bringt, zu so sein schien, das habe ich nun um Christi Willen aus Nachteiligkeit erkannt. Ja, wahrlich, ich halte das alles für ein Wölf. Wer lustig geschafft, weil die Erkenntnis Jesus Christi, Christi, die dazu führte, dass ich ein mein Leben anvertraut habe, wichtiger ist alles irgendetwas was sonst. Um Christi willen habe ich mich um das alles bringen lassen und hälte es auch weiter für einen feuchten Dreck, damit ich Christus ge äh, gewinnen und alles zu Christus gehörend erkannt werde. Nicht die Gerechtigkeit, die alles aus der Tora zu gewinnen ist, soll dich mein sein, sondern derjenige, dich durch die Treue Christi 
so gänglich ist und die Gott schenkt aufgrund des Glaubens. Christus möchte ich erkennen und die Kraft seiner Auferstehung erfahren. An seinem Lied möchte ich Anteil haben und mein Leben soll von der Gestalt sein, Todes mitgeprägt werden, damit ich auch zu Auferstehen von den Toten gelänge. Nicht, dass ich es schon ergriffen hätte oder schon zum Ziel gelängen wäre. Ich laufe auf das Ziel zu, um es zu ergreifen, weil ich selbst von Jesus Christus ergriffen bin. Meine Schwestern und Brüder, ich schätze mich selbst nicht so ein, dass ich es schon ergriffen hätte. Eines aber töre ich. Ich vergesse, was hinter mir liegt und strecke mich auch nach dem, was vor mir liegt. Ich laufe auf das Ziel zu, um das Siegespreis zu erlängen, dass ich die Berufung zum Erwiegen heil, die Gott uns schenkt, wenn wir auf Jesus Christus vertrauen lassen, einlassen. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned the third. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw this son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, they will put those wretches to a he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the young folks to come down. Hello, good morning. So glad you're here. Good morning. So I need you to go way, way back in your memory. Want to stay here? Awesome. Good morning. Good morning. Come on down. So many of you take so long to walk from the back of the church. OK, so can you remember when you were a baby and you were sitting in a high chair? Were any of you babies? No? I was a baby. Were you a baby? Were you a baby? Were you a baby? No? Yeah, you were. Yeah. And you have a baby sister, so you probably know the answers. So when your baby's sitting in the high chair and you're trying to feed it some food, what does the baby say? Yep. <laughs> they say no. 
right? Maybe if you do the airplane or the choo-choo, they might say yes. But they like to say no, right? And what do they do with the food? They slap it on you. They slap it on you, yep. They throw it out. They throw it on the floor, right? But the parents are just trying to feed the baby, right? They're just trying to get you food. You need food. But what do the babies keep saying? No, no. And they throw the food back in your face. They throw it on the floor. What would instead happen? Instead of them eating it, yeah. you eat it. Yeah, yeah. Or instead of them throwing it on you, they, <laughs> instead of us throwing it on them, they throw it on you. Yeah. What would happen if the parents just said, okay, never mind, I'm not going to feed them? They would die. They would probably die eventually, yeah. But they'd be so hungry, right? They'd be so hungry if the parents gave up on them. But even though they keep saying no and they keep spitting out the food, the parents keep trying again and again and again because they love them, right? They love those babies so much and they want to make sure they get food. Did you know that Jesus tells us a very similar story today? Jesus said there was a man who owned a vineyard and he had workers and he told the workers to go into the field and do the work. And guess what the vineyard worker said? Oh, I obviously know this story. No. <laughs> they said no and they kept making mistakes and doing bad things and like murdering each other what do you think the vineyard worker did what do you think the boss did do you think he just told them to go away guess they what got fired. they didn't get fired he said I forgive you try again try again try again try again try again try again right because he needed the workers in his field and he didn't give up on them and guess who also doesn't give up on us yeah, Jesus and God, right? God loves us so much that there's nothing we can do to make God so angry that God wouldn't forgive us. We can say no to God over and over again and spit out our food at God and throw our food on the ground, and God's going to still say, I love you. Here's your food. Chugga, 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 chugga. Right? And I think that that's pretty cool, that we have a God who loves us so much that no matter how many times we say no, or how many times we make mistakes, or how many times we do wrong, God still loves us. And that's pretty good news. So let's say a prayer. God, we thank you for loving us, even when we say no, even when we spit out our food, even when we get angry and stomp our feet and say no. Thank you for always loving us and for always forgiving us. In your name we pray, amen. Thanks for coming up. <laughs> while all the kids get removed. <laughs> I just want to say, if you were confused by our second reading, that was intended. It was read in German by William. Thank you, William. And it was the second reading on the second Sunday at the second service. And we do that to represent the languages spoken in households of our members that are other languages than English. So if you are one of those people, and have never been asked to read, please be in touch with me. This week's gospel text picks right up where we left last week. And it might surprise you, this is the third week in the row, but Jesus is still going strong on vineyard parables. Just to sum it up, Jesus had arrived in Jerusalem a day earlier with a triumphant entry through the city gates and hailed by the crowds and seen with increasing resentment by the religious leaders. As he entered the temple grounds, he turned over tables and caused a lot of turbulence under the vendors and moneylenders and priests. But as if one day wasn't enough, he comes back the next day to teach. And this is where we start our reading today, amidst these teachings. The vineyard parable he tells this time is somewhat special. It is the gruesome story of the torture, beating and killing of the messengers that a landlord sent to the tenants of his vineyard. First they killed all the servants, then they killed even his son, with the somewhat twisted logic 
that they then would become the heirs of the vineyard. Jesus tells the story, the parable, in such a way that you cannot be impartial to the unjust, unprovoked beating and death that the servants and the son suffer. As we do, also the religious leaders Jesus is telling the story to position themselves on the side of the landowner and the innocent. And then he asks the question, now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to the tenants? And they, in their human way of thinking, reply, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at, at the harvest time. Jesus has them where he wants them. And so he surprises them by twisting the story. You fools, you've just condemned yourselves. You are the murderous tenants. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The difficulty about living a life agreeable to God, a life in which we produce the fruits of the kingdom is, how do we know? Who tells us that we are on the right path? How do we know if our actions translate into producing the fruits of the kingdom? And maybe if I see and it does for me, does that also mean my actions produce the fruits for my neighbor? Now, I love checklists, and maybe you do too. It's like, I need to do this, done, check. And one of those checklists, a very early one, was given to the people of Israel on the Mount Sinai. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You shall not have other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Honor, literally glorify, your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not covet anything that is your neighbor's. So the Ten command Commandments are kind of a checklist, right? I haven't done this. Check. But because these are pretty rough outlines only, people continue to come up with more and more. More details on how to worship God correctly so you don't become guilty of blasphemy. Or to define what is murder and who murder refers to. You shall not murder humans, you shall not murder animals, plants, God's creation in general. So laws follow on commandments, follows on law, follows on commandment, and so on. And then there's also the question, here on earth between us, who makes sure we are trying to do the best to keep on the path that produces the fruits of the kingdom? Is that based on our individual, individual judgment? Me, for myself, you, for yourself? Is it an equal balancing across all people for holding each other accountable? Or is the judgment and interpretation of a f or is it the judgment and the interpretation of a few, a few of the same kind, usually, who become the examiner over everyone else's fruitful or not so fruitful doing? And then who is holding them accountable? And what will be the consequences, the punishment, if you don't do it? To be clear, the talk about punishment comes from the mouth of the religious leaders that the tenants, they say that the tenants deserve to die. He will put those wretches to a miserable death. And that is so very much in our also human line of thinking, isn't it? The landowner could have very well responded with vengeance and violence, but instead he mercifully, vulnerably, sends his son. The servants that are talked about in the parable likely represent the Hebrew prophets in, Israel, in Israel's history, many of whom were ignored or killed. 
in, which to, in, re, in response to which Jesus seems to be saying, God gracefully and vulnerably has sent not an avenging angel of wrath, but rather God's own child, not to condemn, but rather to save. And to underline that way of thinking, Jesus quotes from Psalm 118 about the rejected stone that became the chief cornerstone. What looks like rejection becomes the foundation of salvation. The implication of the whole psalm is that it's never too late for anyone, no matter what, to change course and bear the fruit of justice, mercy, and humility. And that in any case, no one is ever beyond the reach of God's forgiveness. Let me say that again. No one is ever beyond the reach of God's forgiveness. So indeed, the entire passion narrative itself is a version of just this kind of inclusive, merciful reversal. Human beings on one side betray and deny and desert and should bear responsibility for the murder of God's child. And yet, on the other hand, God forgives us and even gracefully incorporates our attempts to reject God into the larger story of divine mercy and redemption. What can we say except it is amazing in our eyes? God so loved the world. Now, how does the story continue? Does God send the rightful tenants into the vineyard, as the priest suggested? Historically, and with horrible consequences, the old tenants often have been identified with the Jews, and the new rightful tenants as Christians, or as Jesus followers and non-Jesus followers. You know how the history goes. But the text gives us a different criterion that doesn't allow for that interpretation. The line is drawn between those who bear fruit or produce the fruit of the kingdom and those who do not. It is about action and not about the right citizenship or ancestry or skin color or gender. And when you followed the news in the last couple of days, you might ask, who are the rightful tenants of the vineyard that is the Holy Land? Who are the right tenants of the vineyard that is our planet? Who are the rightful tenants of our churches and congregations and nations and communities? Those who produce the fruit of the kingdom, love that brings life, life that supports life, that enhances life for everyone everywhere. I'm aware that my sermon and my interpretation maybe doesn't make our day-to-day -day task any easier. How do we know we do the right thing, walk the right path? But we can be assured that God's love is the first and the biggest fruit of the kingdom, and it's always part of our harvest. And we are invited to continue to listen and discern what it means to be a tenant in God's vineyard. In you, every day, everywhere. Amen. Please stand as you're able.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. For indigenous communities that have lived in the Americas and other parts of the world for thousands of years, we give thanks. We pray that we will not waver in our commitment to repentance, reconciliation, healing, and unity as neighbors and children of God. Lord, in your mercy. For all those suffering under the grueling attacks of the Hamas in the Holy Land and the counterattacks resulting from it. Lord, in your mercy. For all victims of human trafficking, and especially in Ohio. Lord, in your mercy. For Nobel Prize winners and their contributions to the good of the world, we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy. For all who mourn, especially Marilyn, who struggle with their mental health, who cry out for justice, who hunger, and all in any need, especially Jim and Tom, and all those who we name in our hearts or out loud. Lord, in your mercy. For areas around the world experiencing violence and unrest, including Ukraine, Nagorno-Karabakh, Turkey, and Niger, Lord, in your mercy. For Taylor and Arlene Brudo, at the birth of their son, Dave and Patrick, surround them with your love and care as they are growing together as a young family. Lord, in your mercy. For all the saints that came before us, lived and died with their hearts fixed on you, especially Linda, we give you thanks. We wait with hope for the great day when we join their voices in praise. Lord, in your mercy. Dear. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that peace. You are seated for the offering. You can enjoy our choir as long as you help the actors to pass the plate.
stand as you're able. You give us so much, gracious God, but everything we have is lost compared to the wondrous love we see in Jesus Christ. Send down your Holy Spirit so that this bread and this wine become the body and blood of your Son. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. God, the Alpha and Omega, you are wisdom from which we come, and you are the destiny to which we are going. You abide among us, between us, and within us. Where your vineyard is in the hands of headstrong tenants, bring your liberation, bring your transformation, bring your righteousness, until the day comes when we and your suffering people see you face to face. Ever one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. You may be seated as we sing, and I invite the communion assistants to come forward. Please take a glass from the tray on the front pew as you come up.
As you come forward to receive the sacrament, please take a glass from the tray on the front pew. You will then receive the bread. We also have gluten-free bread. The first assistant with the white chalice has wine, the second with the green is grape juice. If you want to receive a blessing, please come forward with your arms crossed. All is ready. All are welcome.
Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away to spread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring, bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and peace. Again, I invite you to linger and look at the signs on all the high tables to find maybe if there is some matching between what we're looking for and your gifts. I'm sure there is. Go in peace to love and serve.